Hello everyone and welcome to episode 26, the final episode of my Orc Shaman level 1 through 60 playthrough in this season of Discovery, where it has been quite a journey to get to this point and we still have a few more adventures that I want to go on in this episode. But of course with it being the final episode, we are going to be reaching a level 60 where we are less than a bar away and it seems like with the recent phase five of season of discovery some of my settings got reset but there we go and we'll see if i have auto loot enabled but let's go ahead and head out into the dunes of selethis where basically i just need to kill a few mobs in order to get to level 60 and then we will be done with our leveling adventure where like i said this has been a pretty long journey and we have done a lot of things where I feel like it's pretty different from my human mage playthrough but also pretty similar in a variety of ways where we started off as a level one orc shaman and duratar and through kalimdor and through parts of the eastern kingdoms we have completed many quests we have killed many mobs and we have explored many many different areas in order to get to this point in this series where this was a pretty fast paced series because at the end of my human mage playthrough I kind of figured out how I wanted to present vanilla World of Warcraft. We're moving forward in my World of Warcraft Let's Play series we might be doing things a little bit differently where we will be slowing a little bit down in the next World of Warcraft Let's Play episode that I release but with this episode it's kind of going to be in the middle it's not going to be super fast paced but it's going to be a lot of stuff kind of thrown together here where i just need to kill like i said a few more mobs where we are playing as an enhancement shaman in the season of discovery so a big thing with enhancement shamans is that you can use two-handed weapons like a lot of people love to use two-handed axes as an enhancement shaman but with the season of discovery we see the ability to dual wield unlocked for shamans and i've been doing a lot of that in the series where i did a little bit of two-handed enhancement stuff but i've just been doing a lot of two or two one-handed weapons as a dual wielding enhancement shaman where i've been using a lot of two axes and ultimately as far as shaman gameplay goes it is a class that i've always kind of enjoyed it's never been like my top favorite class in the game but coming into the season of discovery i just really wanted to play an orc shaman because the fantasy and like the vibe seemed really cool and i kind of liked some of the runes that we saw that were coming with the shaman in the season of discovery and ultimately i think i enjoyed it a decent amount but i definitely struggled a fair bit with a few different things and here and there i wasn't super enjoying my time playing the azroth just because of like how much i was struggling and like 90 percent of that is definitely like skill related issues so if i was like better at the game if i understood shaman more if i got like better runes and like better gear i would be having a much better time but just from like my little basic baby perspective of playing through season of discovery i definitely struggled a lot as a shaman which kind of led to some poor gameplay moments for me where i think the big idea is that it was kind of just slow and it cost a lot of money because I was constantly buying like more and more water because I have to like drink after every single encounter which I don't think is really a normal experience for a lot of people and it kind of just shows how bad I am at playing a shaman compared to my human mage where I was pretty good at playing a human mage and I think consequently mages are one of my favorite classes in World of Warcraft where shamans may be more on the bottom end I think I like them like a bit more than rogues. I'm not sure what exactly my bottom classes would be. Warlocks probably down there as well, even though I love the toolkit of warlocks. But even though I had some issues with playing as a shaman, I'm still very thankful that I made it to level 59 and soon to be level 60 as an enhancement shaman. And I've had fun just experiencing this class and I think I have like a pretty decent understanding of the class and I kind of experimented a little bit with like some modern WoW gameplay as a shaman and got a good understanding of that. Let's go ahead and kill this Avenger where I'm almost dead. There we go. Wow. Level 60 and what a way to do it. Where the Twilight Avenger killed me, I used an Ankh and I resurrected myself and I dealt a killing blow against this level 59 Twilight Avenger here in Selethis and I deemed level 60 and I also got one reputation with the Sonorian Circle. 
but there we go. After however many hours of playing, or if I type slash played, I played for five days, 31 minutes and 54 seconds, which I think is kind of like the standard time for like a pretty casual player to reach level 60, except we do have to take into account that I do have an experience bonus with this season of discovery. So I was definitely leveling pretty slowly as a shaman, but nevertheless, I have made it to level 60, which is really, really cool where we can unlock a special 100% increased movement speed mount if we wanted to, but you need like 800 to 1000 gold. So I'm not going to get that where we have a wandering swordsman right here just walking through Selethus. Good to see you hero, but we also got a talent point with that where if you come into the elemental tree, I guess I can just throw this over here into improved fire totems. And that is all the talents that I can get as a shaman. Or I guess as any class, this is how many talent points you can get in vanilla, but that's how I have put it into my shaman talent trees. So now that we have reached level 60, the big part of my adventure is done, but there is still some more stuff that I want to do here and there. Where we have some quests unlocked right here where we can go around and chat with different people, and it looks like We've unlocked a few different things here, so not exactly like the stuff that we can do in order to level, but this looks like it's stuff related to Ankrosh, which is not open just yet. But we can see we can pick up the quests, which is interesting, but we won't be able to complete them until we can do Ankrosh, which I will not be doing on this character, because our adventures are almost done. Where I want to go ahead and leave Selethus behind us, and I want to wander north and return home to Orgrimmar, where I want to do a few different things around there. Maybe stop by an Ashenvale for a quick second because it's something that I want to take a quick look at and just explore a couple more things. So let's go ahead and get down there while I talk about playing as an orc, a member of the Horde. For playing as an orc has been a lot of fun, even if Shaman wasn't the most fun for me. Just playing as an orc character and playing as a horde character and traveling through the world of Azeroth from the perspective of a horde character and completing all the different horde quests in all the different zones, including so many of the horde starting areas. It's just been a lot of fun where i'm someone who kind of just enjoys world of warcraft questing and it is my favorite aspect of the game and i really really enjoy both horde and alliance and i think over the past couple of years i have really deep dived into kind of like the different questing experiences that are available in world of warcraft specifically in vanilla but also in like future versions of the game where I played many, many different characters and I've completed many, many different zones. And I think largely, as I said, I am someone who enjoys both Alliance and Horde characters, but I do think I am someone who prefers Alliance characters, where moving forward in the future, I'll probably mostly play Alliance characters and then I'll occasionally play a Horde character here and there just to re-experience some of the Horde storylines. But ultimately, I just have a lot of fun questing as an alliance character into the future expansions of World of Warcraft as well. And especially in vanilla, I think the questing experience is a fair bit more fun as one of the four different members of the alliance compared to one of the four members of the horde. But with that said, I still love the horde questing experience a lot. And I think I really highlighted like basically how it plays out here in this series, specifically from like the perspective of an orc character where I explored a lot of Lordaeron and I talked a lot about the undead and of the Forsaken throughout this Let's Go series in multiple different episodes and that question experience is really really fun as well but there's always just a really really fun questing experience with the horde available and like the barons with like the trolls and the orcs and the tauren making their way into the barons and then we see the undead coming here as well and it's just a massive area and then we spread out through all of kalimdor and we're conquering parts of the eastern kingdoms and we're just exploring many 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 different areas where i explored many different areas in this let's play series and i completed a lot of quests where we don't really have a statistics like page there might be an add-on where you can get like stats 
so I don't know how many quests I completed necessarily, but I definitely completed a lot. And it's been really fun exploring a lot of the season of Discovery as I explored an Orc character and as I explored a Shaman character, where I think season of Discovery has been really, really fun and definitely worth my time. But I do think at the end of the day, I just really enjoy kind of like the classic vanilla the Burning Crusade and Wrath Lichkin experiences where Season of Discovery is fun but it's definitely not like my favorite version of the game where I don't know I just really like the old ways you can play this game I suppose but I still really really valued and enjoyed my time playing through Season of Discovery and it's definitely a fantastic like a one-time experience for me where I am interested to see how this progresses in the future and I will probably play a progression of some sort of classic plus that we see being built off of the season of discovery and season of mastery as well in the future though i may not make a let's play series about that where with the season of discovery we're going to see this version of the game evolve moving forward in the future and with this being the final episode i'm not going to really talk about it moving forward in the future since this is the final episode but i may or may not mention it here and there in my different live streams as i am playing other versions of world of warcraft and i might just talk about what's happening with season of discovery and maybe even future seasons we'll just have to wait and see about that but overall season of discovery has been a lot of fun for me to play and playing as an orc character and as a member of the horde has been a ton of fun and playing as a shaman has been a little frustrating here and there but ultimately has been a great experience and i really really appreciate the time that i spent playing a shaman character and at the end of the day has been really really fun but now that we have made it to ashenvale after a relatively lengthy journey through kalimdor i am at my destination where we of course as i just said are in ashenvale where i'm very zoomed in right now and i saw this bug this is so interesting i saw this bug on reddit but it looks like my roadmap is bugged right now. And I think it might be because of my add-ons. But we are in this area of the world, Fell Fire Hill, where we have a ton of demons all around us. And this is a really interesting area because this is an area of Ashen Vale that I think I dipped my toes into, but it's not an area that we come to as a member of the Horde for any questing purposes. But there are like a couple of quests here for Alliance characters, which is fun. And then in the future of World of Warcraft, as in the Burning Crusade, we see this area expanded upon where we have Demon Fall Canyon. And there are a bunch of level 60s here because there is the special dungeon here, which I actually got attuned to Shadow Tooth illusion ward wards the bear against the fill glamours surrounding demon fall canyon which is interesting but this is just a really fun area that is especially fun for us if we are a horde character because of the monument to grom hell scream because demon fall canyon is the site of a very 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 important location from warcraft 3 where we can read this here lies Gromash Hellscream, chieftain of the Warsong clan. In many ways, the curse of our people began and ended with Grom. His name meant giant's heart in our ancient tongue. He earned that name a hundredfold as he stood alone before the demon Manoroth and won our freedom with his blood. Look Torgar, big brother. May the Warsong never fade. Thrall or chief of the Horde. So this is the site that Grom Hill Scream, one of the most legendary orcs of all time, fell in battle to save the Horde, and because of his actions, we are able to explore the world of Azeroth as a proud orc of the Horde. But let's go ahead and bring glory to the Horde by killing a bunch of Alliance. We're one of the last pieces of content that I want to explore in this series, which may be a very, very interesting piece of content, is the final battleground, Autrak Valley, where there are three battlegrounds in vanilla, and we see battlegrounds expanded here and there throughout World of Warcraft's history. And I really want to explore a bit of Autrak Valley because it is my favorite battleground in the game. However, this might not be the best experience. Oh, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. This might not be the best experience that we have playing 
Altrack Valley because the Season of Discovery community and how World of Warcraft is in general nowadays is very very different compared to the old days where I may have to return tomorrow and play this because it's already 12 30 so i may go ahead and just queue for this tomorrow but we see ultrack valley as a massive massive battleground a 40 versus 40 player alliance versus horde battleground that takes place across a massive map with a wide variety of different objectives and most of the time we see it kind of like a six seven minute battle where it's basically the horde rushing towards the alliance boss and the alliance rushing towards the horde boss and oftentimes when the groups will just like afk because it's like an optimal farm because people are optimizing battlegrounds instead of doing pvp in battlegrounds which is interesting to see but sometimes you can get into really really fun all track valleys where the horde and alliance are really just like fighting to the death and they are pushing each other across the map and it just lasts for a long time where in the old days of vanilla there were many Altrack Valley Battlegrounds that just lasted for a very, very long time. Where we're probably going to have a quick match here where I just want to explore a few things and just highlight this battleground. But let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, it is a brand new day and it is now the middle of the day. So let's go ahead and queue for a battle of Altrack Valley. And it looks like it's still going to be 16 minutes, but it's the middle of the day. So I'm not going to go to bed right now. But while we wait in this queue, I suppose I can do a few different things. Where something I like to do on all my World of Warcraft characters is to collect a few different mementos from my travels across Azeroth. Where I have been doing that on this character. So let's go ahead and just skim through our bank really quickly. We have Benedict's Key, which is from Durator, I believe, and then the Lieutenant's Insignia from our questing in Durator, and a Galvanic Icon, which we got when we were doing runes in Durator, and I think I got a second one since I already know this one. I got some Storm Stout and some Raptor Punch from the Barons, an Enchanted Resonite Crystal from the Stone Talon Mountains, an axe that I like a lot that might be one of the first axes I had, and also the shield that I really like and I think is really cool. I have this Warsong Gulch Mark of Honor from when I did a Warsong Gulch, and I have a Deckhands shirt from the Pirates in the Barrens, a Control Console Operating Manual, which is related to the Samouflage, I believe, a Bristleback Quillbor Tusk from the Barrens, a Warsong Battle Drum from our PvP adventures in Ashenvale, a Jingling Bell, as well as a Preserved Holly from the Feast of Wintervale, some Pine Nut Butter from the Shaman Season of Discovery quest in Thunder Bluff, a Zolver axe, which might be the two-handed axe I used in the series, some Trog Brew, which I'm not entirely sure where that's from, I kind of forget, but some Mince Meat Fruit Cake from Winter's Day, or Winter's Vale, some Coins of Ancestry from the Lunar New Year Festival, a Cracked Silithid Carapace, where I got an extra one of these, a Kodo Skin Scroll, some Warsong Boots, which we got from doing a lot of quests in Ashenvale, and these are really, really cool looking boots. I love the color on them. Some Volatile Rum, which might be from the Pirates in Strangorthorn Vale. I also have this axe, which I guess I thought was really cool, as well as this axe, which is really cool. A small carrier satchel, which is the first bag you get, but I upgraded all my bags, so I don't need the 10 slot bag, though I guess I could upgrade one of these. Where I got a Tellurium necklace of strength, a faded photograph of Lincoln, heavy throwing daggers, a white bone shredder fist weapon, which I was kind of interested in doing a little bit of fist weapon stuff, but I did not patch a tainted skin from Philwood, a deadwood headdress feather from Philwood, my evergreen pouch from doing stuff related to the Ungoro soil and the Thunder Bluff, which I also have the packet of Tharlindra seeds for that, and I got some blood petal sprouts from Ungoro Crater and this crystal pylon user's manual from Angoro Crater, a minion's scourge stone, or 18 minion's scourge stones from the Plaguelands, and a tuned dampener which we can use against Arage, 
I ruined the tome from when I opened many, many tomes trying to complete the quest in the Western Plaguelands. A mechanical Yeti from Winter Spring. Some Selethid goo, which I got one every time I opened like the egg thing at the top of the tower in Selethis, where it took me six attempts to complete that quest. Sorry, I died six times. Some Wild Ken Echo from Winter Spring and a Bounty Hunter's Ring, which I think I got in the Barrens and did not upgrade until recently, where I have these two rings now where I have two small silk bags or packs that my mage, undead mage character made for me and I have old money bag, a six slot bag, and a handmade leather bag, a four slot bag where I have a few things in my inventory here that I might go ahead and just sell really quickly get rid of those, I have some rune cloth which I guess I could just sell and I can repair my armor there where I have a few extra items left in my inventory including some noggin flogger elixirs and swiftness potion which is fun but if we come to the auctioneer really quickly let's go ahead and search for a few different items where I could type in elements and see what are available for us where I could buy these gauntlets of the elements that might be cool what is that 14 gold I guess let's just go ahead and buy that and I have the belt so I think that's everything related to the elements that I can do five thunders no you have to like upgrade and get like dungeon drops I think for that but if you come into here let's look at maybe 55 to 60 one-handed axes what can we buy Felstone Reaver of the monkey that's cool but we got Sarathel here which looks kind of cool not gonna lie and I could maybe upgrade my other axe so let's go ahead and buy that and then maybe let's take a look at some leather armor maybe leather helmets what do we got available for us this looks kind of cool I think that's kind of an upgrade let's go ahead and buy that what about chests because chests are always important and looks like none of these are necessarily better than what we currently have equipped Let's go ahead and check out maybe capes. Is that going to be under a separate thing? Here we go. No. It is not. But we could look at this. Got the line horn of Stormwind, which is 99 gold. So, And I should probably be buying male stuff, actually. So let's look at this. Okay, that looks a fair bit better than what I currently have equipped, but not necessarily better. Where I could also look at pants, maybe. Let's take a look at legs. Nothing. Hmm. How about shoulder pads? Can we get some cool shoulder pads here? Those are kind of cool, but I don't think necessarily better than what we currently have. How about some boots? Because I was just talking about how those blue boots were cool. And yeah, I don't think anything necessarily better. Let's run out here and let's grab Lee's. Or this is leather, but I think it's better than what we currently have. And we want to put some mental dexterity on there. So we really look like a shaman with that on, which is cool. But I got the Seratha axe that I can equip there. And I got the Gauntlet of the Elements, which I need to equip Flame or Lava Lash. And then I need to put a Thick Armor Kit on it, which I have one more Thick Armor Kit. So maybe let's sell these three items and see what gold we got. We just got buffed by Thrall, which is really, really cool. But so that, okay, now I have 21 gold. And oh, I have like the same model of axes, but one is blue and one is green. That's kind of interesting. But if we come back into here, let's look for something. I guess let's go ahead and just buy this for fun. I think it's an upgrade and 17 gold. So I have three gold left. So we are really just gearing out our character for one game of our track rally. But let's go ahead, come down to the mailbox and then we can equip it. And let's go ahead and throw our runes and our armor kit on so onto there and then for chest uh, where is it chest here let's go ahead and equip dual yield specialization so this will increase our damage of course 
And I guess we can go ahead and sell this ribbed breastplate. Where I have another elixir of detect undead and this deadwood ritual potion or totem right there. So that three gold, sixty silver. But I think that's everything that I'm going to do for gearing out this character. Which of course, compared to like a lot of other people around here, I am not well geared at all. But I think we look decently cool with our armor and weapons like this. And I think we're ready for all track Valley. Status update. It's been half an hour since I went into the queue. So we might not be able to get into Altrak Valley because when I type slash who Altrak Valley for people on my server, there's zero people currently in Altrak Valley. So I'm not even sure if new battlegrounds are currently being made, but I'll go ahead and stay in queue for just a moment where I bought some more onks and I forgot to highlight, we now have the two set bonus for the element set of plus 200 armor where I also have one item from the five thunder set, but only one item. So I don't have the two set bonus from that which is cool but one last thing that i forgot to do and i no longer have really any gold so i might not be able to buy too many things is to come to my class trainer here in gramosh hold or speaking of gramosh hold we have the armor manroth here which i think i pointed out in like the second or first episode of this let's play series second or third maybe actually where of course we saw ground house screams memorial earlier and we have this basically kind of like monument or whatever to Gramosh House Scream through the armor of Manroth that is being displayed here in the Valley of Wisdom. But we got the Core Crown Elite in here and we have our Shaman Trainers where we have the Dark Reaver Menace. So we can summon forth the Death Knight Dark Reaver and we can get the Sky Fury Helm which looks pretty cool actually. Looking at Elemental I could get Wind Fury Weapon but I don't have enough gold. Looking at Restoration, I could get Lesser Healing Wave if I wanted. And then we have Enhancement. Oh wait, that was Enhancement. Up to Elemental, we could get Searing Totem or Earth Shock, but alas, not enough gold. But I might go ahead and sit in the queue for a few more minutes. But basically, Altrack Valley is just a really interesting battleground that I love a lot and it's definitely a lot of fun. And I do have some footage of it that you will probably see in a future video that I upload to my channel. So I will highlight it on my channel in some form if I'm not able to get into a game in this series, which will be a little unfortunate. But it is unfortunate to see like the community reaction to PvP in World of Warcraft in the modern day and on the season of Discovery, because I think part of that definitely contributes to this. Because I think basically what our experience currently as I'm making this episode in all track valley would be is if we did ever get into a game where we would probably just win as a member of the horde in like four minutes and all the alliance characters would probably just sit in their spawn and let the horde win anyways and that's something that we see in Arathi Basin and in Warsong Gulch because people are just not doing pvp and are just trying to maximize their honor gain which is very unfortunate but I do think I'm going to go ahead and leave this queue. I'll just give it a few more seconds because I do not believe we are going to get into an Altrak Valley, but I did talk about basically everything that I wanted to talk about. Where it's cool to see Drek'thar, the Orc Shaman in there, and there's Vandar Stormpike, I believe the Alliance leader's name is. But I'll go ahead and leave this queue and I'll highlight it a tiny bit in the future on my channel because I do have some footage from during Wrath of the Lich King on the Wrath of the Lich King Classic servers. But as far as Season of Discovery goes and as far as my Orc Shaman goes, I'll type slash play for one last time here. I'm going to go ahead and call it good here where I had a lot of fun exploring the world of Azeroth and being a member of the Horde and being an orc here in the season of Discovery and basically bringing the Horde's wrath all across Kalimdor and the Eastern Kingdoms and completing many different quests and unlocking some special runes and highlighting a lot of different aspects of World of Warcraft. Where I do have one more adventure I'm going to go on at the end of this episode but basically as far as everything that i want to say goes i'm very thankful for anyone who watched any part of this series be it 
just this episode, maybe just the first episode or any episode in between, or even if you watch like the first five seconds of this episode and you're not even listening to me right now because you clicked away after the first five seconds, thank you so much for watching. And I really hope you all enjoyed my playthrough of World of Warcraft Classic Season of Discovery as an Orc Shaman leveling from level one through 60, where I hope you all are taking good care of yourselves. And remember, as always, to drink some water Check your posture and subscribe. And I'll see you next time in the world of Azeroth. Goodbye. Your news, Thrall said. The man paled, Thrall sighed inwardly. He would never be so brutal or so foolish as to kill a messenger for bringing bad news. Such behavior merely resulted in no one's wanting to serve as messenger. He smiled in what he hoped was a reassuring fashion. The man looked slightly less distressed. He took a deep breath. My lord, he said. He hesitated, then continued grimly. The Draenei have come to Azeroth. Thra was puzzled. He exchanged glances with Etrig, who shrugged. Some Draenei have been in Azeroth for years, he said. They are nicknamed the Lost Ones. We know about them. This is not news, friend. The man looked stricken. You don't understand, he said urgently. Not those pathetic creatures. Draenei, there, there was ship from the skies. It crashed like an infernal stone two nights ago. Thrawn hailed swiftly. No one had missed seeing that strange object in the night sky, looking like a star crashing to earth. So, it had not been a star, nor even an inferno. It had been a vessel. The man was still talking. Proudmore had agreed to aid them. There is one among them, pale, noble, his presence commanding. Though he is not physically strong, they call him Villain. Thra stared, the Draenei, the Prophet Villain, here? He sank slowly in his chair as the full significance struck him. The worst enemy the orcs had ever known had come to Azeroth, had been welcomed into the Alliance. How could there possibly be peace between the Horde and Alliance now? Ancestors, save us, Thra whispered.